Among the characteristic features of the 1973 Endangered Species Convention, CITES, is an emphasis on verification of compliance. Under Article 13 of the Convention, the Secretariat is empowered to follow up on alleged infractions and to draw them to public attention. From the beginning, it did so in close collaboration with NGOs, especially with a small IUCN specialist group called Trade Records Analysis of Flora and Fauna, and Fauna in Commerce, Traffic, set up in 1976, which has since developed into a worldwide NGO network co-sponsored by IUCN and the World Wildlife Fund. As an independent watchdog, the network collects information on alleged infringements of the Convention, channeling the data to governmental CITES management authorities and eventually, via the International Secretariat, to the Conference of the Parties. In the process, NGO members have carried out detailed investigations of illegal trade in wildlife and wildlife products and exposed many suspicious commercial transactions, poaching and smuggling operations. One of the most effective ways of verifying governmental compliance with CITES was the Cactus Test, originally thought up by John Burton, one of the co-founders of Traffic. All wild cactus plants in CITES Latin, the terminology, are listed on Appendix 2 of CITES and hence require an export permit to travel abroad or suitable proof, proof that they are exempt, for example, as artificially propagated specimens. So we went into a department store in Morge and for five Swiss francs acquired a pretty red-flowered cactus advertised as Little Red Riding Hood. From then on, whenever a CITES staff member went on duty travel, he or she had to take the cactus along. Upon arrival at any destination airport in a CITES member country, he or she would proceed through the red entry gate instead of the green nothing to declare gate and innocently ask the customs officer whether and how this plant purchased in Switzerland should be declared for import. The reactions at most airports were amazing and often hilarious. In those days, very few customs inspectors had ever heard of CITES, let alone that their government had ratified the treaty and regularly reported that it was in full compliance with its terms. Their usual reaction was to consult the applicable code of the Customs Cooperation Council, now the World Customs Organization, define the cactus as non-commercial import of an ornamental plant and wave the nosy passenger on. When the passenger insisted on a document, they would either grab some form and stamp it we built up the most peculiar collection of so-called import documents or come up with highly ingenious authoritative explanations why no form was required in this particular case. Others would proceed to a phytosanitary inspection, including the occasional fumigation. One customs officer at Copenhagen Airport informed me that he was far more concerned about the earth in the flower pot than about the cactus and he returned Little Red Riding Hood naked, without her pot. Once, when traveling to the 1978 IUCN General Assembly in Ashgabat, with other staff members and walking through the Red Gate at Moscow Airport, even though the others had implored me not to do it, lest we all end up in a gulag, I was kept in custody for an hour, until the competent official showed up and allowed me exceptionally to move on with the cactus in the interest of international ecological cooperation and in order not to miss my connecting flight. In each case, the cactus bearing staff member had to write a full report on his or her experience for transmission and follow up action to the National CITES Authority concerned. As time went by, more and more custom services did become familiar with the convention and many international airports 
became cactus proof, or at least cactus wise. Yet any customs officer who then proudly produced a copy of the treaty text plus the appropriate form still faced the problem of identifying the specimen at hand. He or she would study the plant intently, ask for her name, enter Little Red Riding Hood in the column for species nomenclature, perhaps declare her exempt as a household item and mumble something about the new green bureaucracy. One obvious risk was to hit upon the same embarrassed customs inspector twice in a row, as happened to me at my hometown airport in Munich. What that Bavarian customs officer asked me to do with that cactus in the native Bavarian dialect <laughs> is unfit for print and therefore could not be fully included in my report to the National CITES Authority. Those, of course, were the early days of CITES. The convention has since evolved worldwide to encompass a new near universal membership of 182 contracting states. Rather than duplicating existing bureaucracies, CITES implementation practice continues to make systematic use of available administrative structures such as national customs services. Under a 1996 Memorandum of Understanding with the World Customs Organization, WCO, the WCO harmonized system of standard tariff classification for import-export has thus been aligned with CITES documentation requirements, joint training and capacity building programs such as the WCO INAMA project for Sub-Saharan Africa, now support national customs administrations in dealing with illegal wildlife trade, similar arrangements for institutional interplay and interlinkages have been developed with other global and regional organizations. <laughs>